Well, you got a better idea? I did once. Tell you what, we could have had a good life together. F real good life. So I hope you know that if you don't never know the rest. You are too much for me, ass. You sound like a horse. And I wish I knew how to quit you. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the recording. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Lots to discuss around Twitter, and we've got some other news, of course. But uh, this particular topic, I think it's pretty hilarious. Remember all the people that said that they were going to leave Twitter? They're just like all the same people that said, I'm going to move to Canada if Trump wins the election, and they crashed the Canadian uh, whatever website, all this stuff, right? Well, how about I show you the real number of people that have actually left Twitter for Massana, even though I could show you more than two dozen mainstream media articles talking about how there's a massive wave of new people going over to Twitter alternatives. And the fact of the matter is there absolutely is not, has not been, will not be. And that's the facts, Jack. We're getting into the story after a super quick word from this video sponsor, Sheath. Huge shout out to this video sponsor. That's right, Sheath. These boxers are designed to keep your balls off your legs. Sheath has three individual compartments to keep everything down there separate and cool and comfortable. And hey, since they've been a long time sponsor, I've heard from many of you who have tried out Sheath and really love it. They were invented by a US Army soldier who came up with the idea for Sheath during his second tour in Iraq, where it was hot as heck and his boys needed to breathe. And on top of all sorts of awesome designs for Sheath, they've added all sorts of winter items, hoodies, gator necks, and all sorts of base layers. Head on over to the link in the description and pin comment down below. Use my promo code to save and support the channel and keep everything nice, cool, and dry. It's weird to think about, especially for fellows to be thinking about changing their undergarment choices, but uh, you've got almost nothing to lose. And uh, I think a lot of you are really gonna like it. It's probably worth giving a try. So we have this article from the New York Times. Twitter rivals try to capitalize on Musk-induced chaos. New startups and other social media platforms sense opportunity as Twitter grapples with changes from Elon Musk, its new owner. Now, I admit, there is a period of opportunity here. It started about, what, two or three weeks ago? Um, but as each day passes, there's less and less of it. Uh, as people just kind of settle back in, there's hardly anybody now actively searching for Twitter alternatives. And what's going to happen eventually is after Elon gets done playing all these, you know, uh, spy games, so to speak, I would assume he's going to, you know, start releasing new features. Features that no other alternative is going to have, like encrypted DMs, like Telegram, um, obviously the long form video stuff he's been talking about, and a whole bunch of other things. Last month, employees at Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, joined a virtual brainstorming session to discuss how to build the next Twitter. Among the ideas Meta workers talked over was more was a more extensive rollout of features called Instagram Notes, where people can share short messages on the photo sharing site with their followers and friends, according to posts of the conversation that were viewed by the New York Times. Others said Meta should build a text-focused app using Instagram's technology or add another feed to Instagram. Well, I can tell you this, most people aren't looking for more apps. They're looking for less, which is what is most interesting about the everything app potential of Twitter. Um, Twitter in crisis and Meta needs to get its mojo back, one Meta employee wrote in a post. Let's go for their bread and butter. A race is on to dethrone Twitter and capitalize on the chaos under new ownership. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Even Vox. Here's a journalist website begging for money right now. Isn't that funny? People value Vox because our approachable work sparks their curiosity. They want a gift? Yeah, let's see how much this gift is. $120 a year? That's where they start you at twelve to a ten dollars a month. Hey, you know I have a locals, the quartering .com. I'd love your support, and I'm not crap Vox. This is we don't need another Twitter. Twitter never fulfilled its promise. Don't expect the current crop of replacements to either. Justin Halpern has more reason to love Twitter than most of us. The 28 year old had trouble finding a writing job in Hollywood until he moved back in with his parents. 
and started to add stuff my dad says. Where he posted all the stuff his dad said, the account quickly went viral. Uh, by 2010, he had a book and a TV series based on it. And now he's an executive producer on Harley Quinn and Abbott Elementary. Twitter basically jump-started my entire career, but the account's been dormant for years, and Halpern doesn't tweet much anymore from his personal account. He went from posting daily to weekly to now most users to just keep up with the news. Well, yeah. I mean, that's going to be the truth. I mean, that's mo what most people use it for. Here's the facts, though. Most people who have threatened to quit Twitter for Mastodon haven't left. Of the more than 100, of more than 140,000 Twitter users who publicly announced that they were moving to Mastodon, just 1.6% actually quit Twitter. Said another way, 98.4% of people that said they were going to leave Twitter stayed. Isn't that funny? Only a handful of Twitter users who have threatened to leave the social media network for open source alternative Mastodon have actually even deleted their accounts. Now, they may have... For, for, to be fair, they may have, you know, left their account up and just, you know, not posted and become kind of dormant. You know, that's possible. But what's interesting is, you know, an analysis of more than 140,000 Twitter accounts shows that although plenty of people have said that they are leaving the site, only 1.6% have wholly abandoned the platform, which was bought by entrepreneur Elon Musk in late October. Quote, I'm not hugely surprised because I'm one of those people that still posts on both. I mean, there's absolutely nothing. See, this is like one of those weird topics where like, I absolutely uh, support using alt tech. I 100% support people using Mastodon. I think people should use it. I think people should use, what's the other one that popped up? Post. Let's get Post gets a little spicy. Um, what's the other one? Uh, whatever it is, you know, I think people should use it. I think people should use minds. I think people should try out different alt tech and support alt tech. But it's always the the people that are announcing their departure that hilariously never actually leave. 1.6%. That's who actually left. And and who's going to, you know, you see Mastodon's an early leader, but it won't be enough for most people. Prior to purchasing Twitter, Musk wondered if he should build his own version. He tweeted, it's a new, is a new platform needed? After he bought Twitter, a lot of people started asking the same question. A number of existing platforms emerged as potential replacements, and there are more in the works now, including one from former Twitter product manager, from Jack Dorsey's co-founder and former CEO Jack Dorsey. Even Meta is reportedly considering jumping in its own Twitter-like feature. Twitter has copied some of its features over, and has copied some of Twitter's features over the years. And while there's certainly an interest to an alternative to Twitter, that alone does not guarantee success. It's impossible to replicate the conditions that created Twitter back in 2006 because they no longer exist. The internet was a different place than it is today, down to how most of us access it through web browsers since iPhones have yet to be invented back, in, back then. A lot of what Twitter is now wasn't even a part of the founder's vision. Many of the features that are inextricably associated with Twitter today, retweets, quote tweets, hashtags, threads, and multiple posts were created by its users. Lots of features on Twitter developed as a kind of demand from how a particular community used it. You can create the technology, but you can't anticipate the community and what they're going to do with that technology. We also know the past attempts to create Twitter clones have not panned out. Several companies tried to capitalize on conservatives who thought Twitter was too biased. Gab, Parler, Getter, Truth. They've all had hard times attracting users and money. And some of them are little more than echo chambers with a side, vir a side of virulent racism. Well, let me just address that. Uh, yeah, they are kind of echo chambers that's fair to say um but money i mean truth socials had money come into it i think they're doing like a public offering soon gab um i i don't think that gab's target market is everybody i think it's for a particular set of people and they like it and i like gab gab is the most secure safest lock on free speech and a free speech platform on the internet and when you have all these, you know, at least one platform hopes to capitalize on the latest Twitter Exodus post, which launched just a few weeks ago, is in very early beta stages. It's been out for a while with just over 100,000 users, but it's managed to attract some of Twitter's power users and a good number of journalists. This makes sense as journalists and people follow them appear to be Post's target. 
but it remains to be seen if Pulse will get widespread adoption and simply be another echo chamber. It, I can tell you right now, it will not. I've used Post. There's not a lot going on there. That's super exciting. Twitter is and will remain Twitter. I don't see a replacement for it, especially if Elon can add additional features. Now, if Elon stagnates, doesn't add additional features, absolutely could, could end up stagnating and being boring and, and have people you know, not want anything to do with it. But the fact that nobody actually left, all those, you know, this isn't an airport, you don't need to announce your departure. All of those people, none of them left. Why would anyone think they're going to leave now? And when we've got the Twitter files every day, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe down below and we'll talk to you again real soon.